So this particular research protocol, which we have had active now for uh, more than a year, uh, studies two groups of individuals, normal people and people with type 1 diabetes. And for each of these two groups of individuals, uh, we have uh, screened them through two visits to make sure we've selected the right people, so generally people in good health. And then we uh, have a carefully designed inpatient stay of four days where we have uh, fixed the physical activity and also the type and amount of food they eat and the time at which they eat the food. So the overall uh, protocol will enable us to do several things. Um, the two main goals are one to improve the software that is needed to close the loop and second is to enhance the technology that is um, to uh, enhance the technology that uh, constitutes the closed loop so you can think about a closed loop as uh, sensing glucose delivering insulin and having a software program that goes between the two. So by enhancing the technology, what we mean is that we capture physical activity and then we are moving towards incorporating that into the closed loop too. We know that glucose changes happen because of food intake, insulin changes and activity. So one of the things that we can capture here is activity because of the highly accurate activity capturing devices developed by uh, Dr. Levine's team over the years. So we are using those devices which are continually getting better and better. We are using those devices to capture the activity and see what is the impact now on glucose and then we'll have to move it through the in the future through better iterations and we can come to that uh, in the course of this presentation. So for this particular San Diego presentation we um, saw that after a, physic after a meal if people were not moving then their glucose was higher than if they were moving after a meal and this held good for both normal people and people with type 1 diabetes. The difference between normal people and people with type 1 diabetes was that the glucose in, no in people with type 1 diabetes was higher than in normal people, and you would expect that. Um, once we have all, this da all these data, then I think we have to look at various ways of analyzing them, and that's what we're trying to do now, uh, look at various ways of analyzing, and especially a time relationship between okay if you increase physical activity by so much for such a period of time the glucose change will be so much after a delay of so much time you know that's the kind of mathematical analysis that our research group is doing 